Hi, my name is Thomas Maurer and in this video we are going to have a look how you can update and manage updates for your Azure Local Instance or your Azure Local Cluster. Here we are in the Azure portal and again if you manage anything with Azure Local you go to the Azure Arc uh, Center and that's where you manage all your resources which are running basically outside of the Azure uh, data centers. And so for Azure Local, we scroll all the way down here in the menu, uh, go to Azure Local. And again, if you haven't watched my videos about Azure Local and how you manage those and what it is, um, I put a link in the description below so you can actually watch the whole thing. This one is purely focused on how do I actually do uh, updates on Azure Local. So if you go to Azure Local again, I go to all systems and then you get an overview about all your Azure Local instances or Azure Local clusters here in one very, very nice view. Uh, again, you get immediately like, hey, is this system connected? But you also get the information here, for example, if your clusters have updates available or if they're up to date or if there's anything uh, going on with them. So again, this is perfect timing uh, today. So we, we just have released uh, 25, uh, 10 as a new update. So you can see that some of the clusters still need that update here as well. So we're gonna have a look at the Virginia cluster here. And if I open up this cluster, uh, again, this is how you manage Azure Local directly from the portal, you can immediately see here that the system has one or more updates available and it points this out so that you're aware uh, that there's actually something going on uh, as well. And then you can scroll down and if you go to the operations part, there is where you actually manage the updates on this cluster. So if I click on updates, it will tell me here that updates are available, that basically the pre-checks um, are basically done and their system is actually healthy to receive those updates. And then I can also see what is the current version I'm actually running here. So again, I'm on 25.09 at the moment and we're gonna to update to 25.10. So again, we have this monthly cadence of updates um, where we deploy obviously bug fixes, new features, security updates, and so on. So in addition to that, before we jump in, uh, in actually running this update. You can also go, for example, to the history tab. And here you can see, uh, okay, the updates which we have run before, right? Uh, and you can see here, uh, these the normal solution updates, those are the ones from Microsoft. But then we also have these SPE solution updates, which are basically solution builder extension. Uh, those are usually possibilities for hardware vendors to actually provide firmwares and drivers and package these up into update packages. So you you don't need to go out and do all the work by yourself manually, go to each host and install a specific driver. Uh, and with that, they also make sure that they're all on the same level, that they have the same driver across everything, that the same firmware, that everything is nicely packaged uh, together. And again, there's a lot of other things you can imagine with the solution builder extension updates. This one we already have done. This was pretty new. So this is already deployed here. Uh, again, uh, depending on your system and your hardware vendor, you get these uh, solution builder extension updates as well. If I go back to updates, uh, again, this is specifically now to this specific Azure local instance here. Um, if I want to have an overview about everything which is going on in terms of update management, I can go to Azure Update Manager. And this is basically the centralized place where I can update my Azure Virtual Machines, my Arc enabled servers. So systems or servers for Linux and Windows, which run, for example, also outside of Azure on top of VMware or on top of Azure Local. So I can also use that to manage patches for these systems as well. Uh, but then again, we wanna have a look at Azure Local here. Uh, where you then can see, hey, these are all my Azure local clusters here. Uh, and again, you can see here that like some of these clusters are needing updates. So if I have a lot of these clusters, I can also automate that process or do, for example, multi-select and then choose here uh, one time update if I wanted to. 
So again, this is a great, Azure Update Manager is actually a great way. You can basically go out and patch your underlying infrastructure on Azure Local, uh, including obviously security updates, feature update, bug fixes, and so on, as well as you just saw the solution builder updates. And then you can also patch your workloads on top of it. So for example, if you run certain types of VMs, again, Linux and VM, um, Windows, you can also use Azure Update Manager to also patch these in a centralized way. But for now, let's go back to our cluster here and let's go and actually go and uh, install that update. Again, I have to say that we will obviously cut this video a bit because this will need some time. Uh, the update process will take care that everything is actually checked before that you can actually run this update. It will then start moving all the resources away from one node uh, within the cluster to make sure that they can patch that specific cluster uh, or node in that cluster and then basically uh, make sure that the node is back okay comes back into the cluster and life migrate back out the workloads on this system and then do that with every single node within the cluster so that you don't have any workload interruption uh, in this case right so i hit one time update here and then you can see here there is a pre-check uh, which actually goes out and checks um, the health of the system, right? Um, so you can see here have some informational uh, things here, but then if you go to success, there's also like a lot of checks which run up front to make sure that everything is actually okay when I run this update. And there will be more checks before actually the whole update process will start, but this is the, the readiness check for your system, right? And then if I click next here, you will see here the available updates. So if a solution builder update, for example, uh, extension update is also available. Uh, this will also show up here as well in this list, and then you can select it here as well. Um, this will then go out if I click next, and then we'll start with the downloading uh, these updates to the system. Now, if you have Azure Local on a place where you don't have a lot of bandwidth, there's also a way uh, to actually uh, sideload these updates. So you can bring them and put them on a file share and then get these basically directly like loaded onto the system uh, from this file share. And the same thing works obviously for solution builder extension updates uh, as well. So now again, I'm going to select this update, click next, and then um, basically going to tell me, okay, this is what you're going to do. I have to accept this and then hit install. And now we will start the installation process. In a few seconds, we will be able to then see and monitor actually the whole process here. Um, so again, this will take a few minutes uh, or seconds basically to appear, but then we can monitor like what is actually going on. How is it uh, running through? So I will click on this. And again, it will take a while here uh, for this to show up. So now I hit refresh and I can see here that this update uh, here now is in progress. So if I look at this, I can basically see now where we are in this stage, right? So um, we will have more uh, in, a, in a bit. If I hit refresh, we'll see here at one point that the download will start and then we will validate the system readiness again and then basically go into installing these updates. Now, again, this will take a couple of uh, seconds, minutes to actually update uh, directly. Uh, what I also want to mention is that this is not just like updating the nodes, obviously, of Azure Local, but also the management, like which runs on top of it, like the Arc Resource Bridge and all the extensions uh, which come with it. Um, so it's like a one place update. It's not just like installing patches on the nodes itself, but the whole solution as itself. Now, what you can also do here is it obviously gives you some version information. And then I always recommend that you actually go out and check out the release notes. So if that takes you basically to the Azure local documentation page and then under overview, uh, you can basically scroll down and I will zoom in here just a little bit. Uh, you can go to release notes and then under release information, you can find more about how the releases of Azure local work. So there's a lot of explanation here, how this release cadence works. You can see here that we are monthly and then we have these feature updates. Uh, which we ship as well, which also sometimes underlies like a new change in, in the oper underlying operating system, for example. And again, we have a lot of explanation here how this works so that you can completely understand what's going on uh, if you want to dive into this uh, as well. Um, there's also always the question, okay, what versions are supported, obviously. So uh, you can see here 
um, the version format and you can have a look at uh, the supported versions of Azure Local. So at the moment we go back to 2505, that's the latest version you need to basically have to run in a supported version. Uh, again, you can, as you saw there, there's uh, the change here with the different OS build versions, right? So uh, we obviously have the new OS build version, which then goes back to this, and then we merge this to um, 26.10 here uh, in, a in, in a later point of time. But then also, obviously, there are all other versions, and we still keep the documentation. So if you run into like any issues or want to go look at what, what has happened, you can see here a list of all the versions of Azure Local. Uh, but for now, obviously, we're interested in the latest one here. So if I want to learn more, there is for this specific update. And again, I usually highly recommend to go through this before you actually run this update. You can check out what is new in terms of security updates, uh, what feature and improvements did we add, and then there, if there is any known issues uh, with this update uh, or with this version. So let's say I go into October update, security patches, so I can see here uh, what the improvements are. I get a, a very good list here in, in terms of transparency. And then if I go back here, I can also go and have a look at the feature and the improvements here. And um, if I scroll down here again, there's this OS change mentioned here where we switch from 25 uh, to 26 here, um, so that you basically are upgraded to that specific version. And there's a cool new feature introduced introduced as well, like for example, Azure Rec Aware clustering, which I have discussed a little bit in in the other Azure Local Overview video, um, and so on. But you can you can see here there's a lot of also not just like fixes, but obviously new features coming here uh, as well with these specific updates. So let's go back to the Azure portal and let's quickly hit refresh to actually see uh, what is going on with this update process. So now after hitting refresh, you can see here that the download uh, part is now in progress and it basically said, okay, it already download this 100%. Uh, so it's now checking obviously that everything is correct and the file is not corrupted in anything. And then after that, we will hide in the system validation check again. So to make sure that everything is, is right. And again, I will give you a quick refresh uh, later on or at the end of the video to see what the checks are goes through. And then after that, it will basically go in and install these. So again, super easy actually to first downloading the update package, then going to validate the system and then installing the updates. So again, we will be a little bit back after a little while while this is uh, basically making sure that we have the right file and everything is okay and we start the validation process. So now our update is finished and we can have a look here on how that actually looks like. So again, you saw that we had first the download process to download the update and make sure that the file is not corrupted. Again, this file can also be sideloaded as I mentioned before, so that you don't need to download the whole update over your internet connection, depending on where your cluster is running. And then it runs through a couple of validation steps to make sure that the upgrade process or the update process is actually correct. So it, for example, checks uh, your storage services, your storage pools, your failover clustering. It makes sure that firewall rules are set correct, that certain services are available, that it has the network connectivity it needs, that the resource bridge is working and that everything is actually in a healthy state. So again, you can dive into this list uh, for the check, but again, important that it actually uh, completes and shows a healthy state. And then it will automatically start as it did the install uh, process. And so you can see here, it has a preparation step and then it goes through uh, the update process here as well. And again, during the installation process, which obviously takes a while, depending on your cluster size, on the size of the update, on the fixes included in the update, um, as well as on the workloads running on top of your clusters. So that will take a while, but it's completely hands-free basically. Uh, you can monitor it though. And again, now it obviously, because we already done, it shows success everywhere, but we can also have a look here, for example, uh, and go afterwards and see what it actually has done. So for example, when we go and updated the security policies here in our system, um, updated the software stack uh, here as well got into the hardware upgrade. And again, I talked about the solution builder extension. 
update before. So it made sure that it does update all these nodes there with this as well. And then we have actually the installation, the, the pre-update phase where we make sure that everything is ready to deploy. And then we have the up, update phase and you can see here, uh, for example, the OS deployment part uh, where we do uh, update the OS. And then again, you can see here all the different components which get patched during that process. And also it completes like the uh, hardware update process uh, as well from the solution builder package I showed you before. So that is how you actually update your Azure local instances. Now, again, you can learn more and I always recommend to actually read through the documentation uh, that you're aware of like what is new, um, what are the known issues, what issues are fixed, and then also a little bit about how do I actually do the lifecycle management of Azure Local. I can also trigger these updates like directly on the machine itself. So I can use a PowerShell remoting connection and actually connect locally to the Azure local instance. But again, I can also do that super easy and simple uh, over the Azure portal. And in most cases, again, if you have many of these clusters, uh, it's a very easy step to do. Uh, you can also monitor these, uh, these updates very, very nicely here. Um, again, depending on the scenario you are, uh, you can have different options here and there are different ways of doing it. So with that, I wanna say thank you very much. I put all the links into the description below. And I hope I see you on the next video. Thank you.